ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا رب العالمين We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for praising us to wajah for his blessings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us his pleasure in this dunya hereafter. Allahumma ameen ya rabbil alameen. We continue, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, with the beautiful book, the explanation of the beautiful booklet of Shaykh Abdul Rahman ibn Nasir al-Sa'di, rahmatullahi alayhi. Al-wasail al-wafida min hayati al-sa'idah. That can be translated as useful ways or beneficial means to a happy life. And in that, we're going to take the explanation of multiple uh, ulama and scholars in that. I mean, it's Sheikh Hamad al Ibrahim, Abdullah Ta'ala. And we talked last time, talked, I think we had two uh, classes so far in this book. And the first was an introduction, the second was an introduction. Of the Shaykh, Abdullah, and, and we started with the first means or the first setup, the first useful way for the person which who wants to reach the happiness and to live a happy life in dunya and hereafter. And that was what was the first means. Imanun wa amal salih. Just the iman, the faith, and good and righteous deeds. And the Shaykh Abdullah, he brought as an evidence for that that iman. And uh, like faith and the good and righteous deeds, it's the greatest foundation, the greatest means for the person to reach the happiness in dunya. And after he brought an ayah as an evidence, ayat 97 in Surah Nahd, when Allah says, Man amila salihan min dhakarin aw untha, wa huwa mu'min, fala nuhyayannahu hayatan tayyibatan, wa nanajaziyannahu ajrahum bi ahsani ma kanu ya'malun. So bringing this ayah, the Shaykh, uh, said, like the translation of this ayah, that whoever works righteousness, man or woman, and is a true believer, so the two conditions, works righteousness, good deed, is a man or a woman, and is a true believer, verily to him, we will give a life that is good and pure, and will bestow, bestow on such their reward according to the best of their actions. The Shaykh, regarding this, says, so Allah, the Most High, informs and promises whoever joins true belief with good and righteous deeds, true belief number one, and good and righteous deeds, that Allah Azawajal, he will give him a good and pure life in this world and a good reward in this world and in hereafter. So let us get the, the full like, the understanding of these beautiful words of the Shaykh Muhammad till here. So he brought this as an evidence for this ayah, uh, brought this ayah as an evidence for what he said that the iman and the good and righteous deeds are uh, the greatest means for the person to, re to live a happy life in his dunya hereafter. That he mentioned that in this ayah, Allah Azza promises wa'ada, and the promise of Allah is always true, haq. Allah never breaks his promise. He promised that whoever brings in this dunya and hereafter, the Iman, faith, and Amal Salih, Allah Azza will fill his life with everything which is good and pure. Not only, but in hereafter, will give him the ultimate success and the bliss on the day that people are going to stand in front of Rabbul Alameen, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever believes in Allah and he does good and righteous deeds, for him, it is the Hayat al the good and pure life. And the opposite, Whoever takes his back or ba ba uh, turns his back away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah promised him ma'ishatan dhanka. What is ma'ishatan dhanka? A very wretched, very terrible life in this world. Even if he is wealthy. But he's going to live a very unhappy life. And if you're going to be resurrected on the day of judgment, as blind. And Allah Azza wa says, when this word, when Allah subhanahu wa says, 
Arabic is so beautiful. فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاتًا طَيِّبًا We'll make him live a good, pure life. The word here in Arabic, hayat, uh, is indefinite. Indefinite. There is no al-hayat. In Arabic, al, that al-ta'rif, you say that, you make it definite. The definite article, al. Here Allah Azza says, hayatan. Life. Is there that meaning that this is everything, hayatan, uh, and this is general and, and in the, the life his life is going to be full of good things then he mentioned طيبة, good and pure everything which is included in the definition of word pure and good so he didn't say the pure life no he said hayat, which is for a uh, general generalized and طيبة, everything which is included in the definition of good and pure. And al-hayat al-tayyibe, or the good and pure life, includes person being comfortable, having peace in his heart and mind. Person who has a good well, uh, wellness in his life, well-being in his life. His chest is open, he's happy. Husn al and people, even even he, when he when he's alive, and even after passing away, people will speak good about him, will remember him for goodness. That is hayat al tayyib, and that's that's your live. Among the the examples of this, who are like one person who really we know that he lived a good life is who Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam. He is an example of the person who really lived a good life. Here in hereafter, and we're gonna have that good life. In this door, we're in life, and going to have that good life in hereafter. Allah Azza wa Jal, the recited, Allah gave him hasana, goodness, in this world of life. And Allah Azza wa made him, even after he passing away, all the, his, uh, up the, his, uh, and like his uh, children and grand grandchildren, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi is a part of there. So everybody, even the Jews and the Christians that try to, to say Ibrahim is of us and we are from Ibrahim and, and things like that. SubhanAllah, that is a good remembrance for him. Alayhi salam. And then hereafter, he has hasana. Allah Azza wa gave him hasana hereafter. What's the hasana? Allah is pleased with him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ridha Allah rahman Allah Azza wa And he will enter Jannah. That's a hasana that he will receive in hereafter. That, that is, a, is uh, the Shaykh says that this is included that the, here, the happiness of this dunya is related to the happiness of the hereafter. And they, as they say, in this worldly life, there is a jannah, there is paradise, that whoever does not enter that paradise of this worldly life will never enter the paradise of hereafter. In this dunya, there is a paradise that whoever does not enter in that paradise here in this world while he is alive, he will not enter in the paradise hereafter. Allah Azza wa says, الَّذِينَ آمَنْ وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِيمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمٍ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمُ الْأَمْنُ وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ Those who believe, who believe, and they did not mix their iman with dhulm, with wrongdoing. And dhulm here is meant shirk. Dhulm here is meant shirk. It's also shirk with Allah Azza wa Because that's the greatest, like the gravest uh, dhulm and wrongdoing. For those, for them, is going to be the ultimate M, safety and security. And they are guided once. That's what Al An'am. So here they say, Al Amnutam, the complete, full, ultimate safety and security, and the complete, full, ultimate guidance, both that Allah mentioned this ayah. They're going to be for, for this person, for the believers and the, the good deeds, where in this dunya, in the barzakh, in the grave, before the, uh, before the, the resurrection, and the day when you're gonna, people are going to be resurrected. Why? According to your iman and good deeds. According to that. So whoever, Shaykh Muslim Tamiya mentioned that, that whoever he completed or his iman, and achieved and gained his iman in the most perfect uh, form. For him, it's going to be the ultimate, uh, ultimate success guidance and the ultimate safety and security. 
dunya, the grave, and the hereafter. All of it. And the opposite. Whoever did not have 10% iman, this is what you're going to get. 50% iman, this is what you're going to get. And amal is salih. And he said, subhanallah, and min a'wa min am, and the, from the, among the greatest uh, ways of God, or the greatest, uh, like, uh, the, the, the greatest forms of guidance and safety and security is reaching the happiness and the pleasure, uh, the satisfaction, and the, the sakina, and the, 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 the comfort, and the bliss, dunya and hereafter. That does not mean that the person will not be tested. That does not mean that the person will live everything, all, all uh, he has money, he is wealth, he, he is healthy, he has everything and everything. He said, no, it doesn't mean that this person is already living the ultimate or the, the happiness in this dunya, in dunya and hereafter. That doesn't mean the person will not going to be tested or any calamity would not befall on him. That doesn't mean. Because this is not, not the, that's in, only in general, paradise. That there were no testing and no calamity and nothing. But the purpose here is what? And the person is calm, I mean, his comfort in his heart. His heart is full of iman, and his heart, he is full of believing in the qadr of Allah, whatever Allah as well has, has decreed, he believes in that, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give according to his belief. Ibn Hazm, rahmatullahi, he says some beautiful words. One, he described that the people, all the people, the same like the book, Ibn Hazm mentioned that, that before the book that we call the, I think, uh, the, the person who wrote the book, uh, Stop Worrying and, and Start leaving, Living. So he mentioned the same that, subhanAllah, that all the people they ask or they seek to stop worrying and to stop their, their uh, 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 anxiety and depression and worrying and, and, and concern. He said, in the world, from the beginning of the world till the end of it, there is nobody that life or likes to live uh, his life full of worries. Doesn't nobody like likes to, to, to be worried or to be concerned of things, and nobody that does not want the worry to go away and to remove the worries and the concern from him. When I realize this, he says, when I realize this in myself, and this secret was become, became apparent to me, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enlightened my thinking of, for this great treasure, I, I, I searched about the ways to reach this, meaning that how can you remove your worries in your life? And how can you remove your anxieties in your life? Said, and that became apparent to me that for everybody, Every soul, be that a person who is a jahil, ignorant, a person who is a scholar, a person who is good, a person or a person who is, who is corrupted, that I did not find anything better to reach to that, to remove the worries, better than the, 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 the deeds for the hereafter. I did not find any other deed except that if a person works for the hereafter, if he works for hereafter, he believes in hereafter, that will make his worries go away. And he said, continue, said, I found the works, the deeds for the hereafter that was uh, far, far from any shortcomings, far from, from any defects. And I found that it's pure from any uh, anything which can, can stain it. And I found the person who works for the hereafter, he has, meaning he has a good intention for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, works for the hereafter, that if he is tested with a calamity, if he is tested with, with something that will bring worries to him, actually, he does not get worried. And he does not get uh, get concerned. Even if something bad thinking uh, it happens to him, if, if a worry happens to him, or usually brings worry to people, a calamity happens to him, actually, indeed, he becomes happy. Why? Because he said he hopes for the good ending of that. If a person, any calamity be, be, uh, befalls him, if a, is a Muslim, he knows that, alhamdulillah, with being patient, Allah will give him more to him. So th that's what he's explaining. So instead of being worried and have uh, uh, being depression and anxiety and feeling sorrow, sorrowful, actually he's happy what happened to him because he knows 
if because he believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his patience will give him more reward in dunya and hereafter. And he says that I found that everything which is a barrier between him and reaching something good that it doesn't make him worry. Said uh, He said that he knows that everything which is a barrier is not going to affect even if he doesn't reach what he wants, it's not going to affect, well, uh, because it's not going to be taken in account by Allah Azza wa Jal, whatever he can do. That is not in, in, on his means. And I, I, I have seen that person, if a person is harmed, and he believes in Allah, he has the, or the good deeds, if a person is harmed by anything harmful to him, or a calamity happened to him, he is being happy. If, he, even if, if he's tired, and he struggles a lot, Actually, he is in a happiness and joy and pleasure that nobody can uh, can believe that what is he doing. That's why they used to say, the, from the son of the Salihin, if the kings and the sons of the kings know what we're feeling of the joy and the happiness with the Iman, they would fight us to take that joy that we have in our hearts with their swords. They would fight us to take that with their sword, subhanAllah, because of the Iman. Then he ended his, his words by saying, Know that what everybody is seeking is one thing, to remove the worries, to remove the anxiety and sorrows. And there is only one way to reach that, and that is Doing good deeds for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Doing good deeds for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Tamir has some beautiful words regarding this in many uh, scattered through uh, his beautiful books. When he says, listen carefully. He says, Indeed, the reality of a person, a slave of Allah, is his heart and his soul. You are by your, your heart and your soul body. It's, it's going to die, you're going gonna to get another body, new body in the day of the judgment, the other, but it's your ruh, your heart, and your soul. And the, this heart and soul cannot be mended, cannot be rectified, except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the only one who deserves to be worshipped, and there is not, no God other than him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this person, and he, he doesn't, he's not happy in this dunya except by remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this person, the soul and the heart of that person is always struggling, always putting efforts until he meets Allah Azza wa Jal. Ya ayyuhal insan, innaka kadihan ila rabbika, innaka kadihan ila rabbika kadihan famulaqi. Oh mankind, you are struggling towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala early and you will meet him you will meet what you're struggling for the day of the judgment so there is no salah there is no rectification or there is no mending of the heart except in meeting allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even he says even if any of the momental joys temporary joys and pleasures happen to people in this worldly life without allah and any any momental or temporary joys happen they are not they don't, they're not living forever. It's gonna, it's gonna, you're gonna take moments and it's gonna end. These pleasures are just temporary, they're gonna end. They you can move from one to another, are different from one person to another. What brings happy to happiness to my, my and the joy to my heart doesn't bring to your heart. What I enjoy, you might not enjoy. So it's different and it's relative to one person. Sometimes he enjoys this thing. Any example, you can take. Sometimes you enjoy kids, for example. Sometimes they enjoy to play video games. Some other times, if they are doing something else, they don't enjoy it. Maybe the same game, they loved it so much. Or anything. Sometimes they don't enjoy that. And sometimes uh, a person who enjoys something, the other one doesn't enjoy that, said that, but his God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with him, there is no way that he can live without him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every time, everywhere, the person cannot live 
Allah subhanahu without Allah Azza wa Jal. That's why Ibrahim al Khalil, Rahmat uh, alayhi salam, what did he say? La uhibbul afirin. When he saw the the moon and the, the sun and he, he saw the, the stars and uh, was the, uh, giving the, the evidence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the God who deserves to be worshipped, he said, La uhibbul afirin. When the start ended, uh, the day came, he said, I don't like those who, who end, who come to an end. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His life is abadi, and the Allah Subhanahu wa Taala everlasting, and he, he, he existed before everything existed, and will exist after everything will not exist. He's all, always Allah Subhanahu wa Taala Qayyum, Al Hayyul Qayyum. That's why the greatest ayah in the Quran is what Ayat Al Kursi. Allahu la ilaha illa ha wa Al Hayyul Al Qayyum. The first beautiful names of Allah Azza wa Jalla, and he started started what? Al Hay Al Qayyum, the living, the ever living, the ever asking Subhanahu wa Taala Al Qayyum, the one who every single creature lives because of him, and their life is based and depending on Allah, and his life Subhanahu wa Taala depends on nothing. Allah Azza wa Jalla is always living. So that is said. There is nothing in the creatures of, of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that a person can his heart can feel comfortable or can feel at peace. At it, except with the, the Allah, except that Allah is the Creator and the Tawheed and the blessings of Allah uh, Subhanahu wa Taala. وَمَا مِنْ عَبْدٍ غَيْرَ اللَّهِ وَإِنْ أَحَبَّهُ وَحَصَلَ بِهِ مَوَدُّ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَنَوْعٌ مِنَ اللَّذَّةِ فَهُوَ مَفْسَدَةٌ لِصَاحِبِهِ أَوْضَمَ مِنْ مَفْسَدَةِ الْتَلَذُّ أَكْرِتْ أَكْرِتْ طَعَامٍ مَسْمُومٍ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ. So there is no pleasure or there is no. Uh, a uh, person who worships somebody else other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and because of his worship, he's worshiping a tree, he's worshiping an animal, he's worshiping a person. Because of that worship, maybe it reach, he reaches some, he has some love towards that person or towards that thing that he, he worships, obviously. And he because of that, he reaches a kind of a short-lived pleasure. There is not actually indeed that is mefsada, that is actually bad and evil for him, the same thing like it is the person who eats poison, a food which he likes, he loves it, and it's poisonous food. It's going to uh, harm him in this dunya and hereafter. And he mentioned that, that وَلِهَذَا SubhanAllah, they said, you can find the people who are indulging, overindulging, and in, in, indulging in all luxurious or all uh, following their desires. Everything they want, they do it. Everything they 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 like it, they do it. You will find them that they go to to uh, from one thing to other thing to to please their senses or to, to please everything they what what they want to listen, what they want to eat, what they want to, to drink, what they want to to smell, everything they like. They do whatever. Was that called hedonist hedonist hedonistic? Yeah, yeah, any hedonism. That uh, it's like a black hole. The, they just uh, follow this desire and that desire, and they are never pleased. They never reach that happiness which the person wants. Follow this and never, subhanAllah, whatever they want, they, they, they wish they have in the dunya, and still they are not pleased with that. Why? It's like a black hole. They just keep following the, their lust and following their desires, but never reach the happiness what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give because it has come only from Allah Azza wa Jal. So that even the person the person who reaches whatever he reaches from this dunya, dunya, for example, following the desires, he is never happy. And the person who wishes to have, said, I, I wish I have the money to do whatever these guys are doing. Okay, The person, but he can't. That actually he is double because he doesn't have what he wants. For, because of that, he's going to be more depression, uh, the depression in his heart in there. And even and, and and then and he doesn't do that depression because he doesn't do that and depression because he doesn't have the 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 money or the what the, the others are, are are looking for. But the believer he says, the believer he has the he has the the, the maybe the, the means to do what these disbelievers are doing. He has the means, but he has his uh, will. And strong will to leave it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His beneficial knowledge. 
his heart will be or his chest will be open and then he'll he'll be happy with this amal salihah the good deeds and he will feel the pleasure of his eyes and the uh, they call the apple of the eyes the prophet Sallam said that my, the pleasure of my eyes is made where in salah that is within but if he doesn't have it alhamdulillah he is patient for that because he knows that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh will give him reward for that even if he doesn't have doesn't have what he wants to do in this world of life and this is says is mujarrad is experience from the people in this world of life we stop here inshallah i ask allah azza wa jal to grant us happiness in this world of life and after allah ameen ya rabbil alamin so we commented only in the first uh paragraph of of that that the believer who has uh that good uh, iman and good deeds he will reach reach the uh, live a good life pure in this world of life and has a good great reward in hereafter inshallah continue with our other uh, points regarding this and other means in the next time I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to uh, forgive our sins and to make us from the righteous of the Salihin Allahumma ameen ya Rabbil Alameen Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa na urzukna atiba'a wa arina al-batila daata na urzukna ajtinaba la ilaha ila anta subhana kinna kanu min dalameen Allahumma aslih akwalana wa hal al-muslimin Allahumma aslih akwalana wa hal al-muslimin Allahumma arzukna al-sa'ada al-abadiyya fi al-dunya wa al-akhira ya Rabbi al-alamin la ilaha ila anta subhana kanna 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 alameen sallallahu alayhi wa nabiyyina wa alhamdu asam fi ajma'in subhanak Allahum bihamdik نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك ونتوب إليك